Is an ocean, you can drown me. The sweet embrace, the lovely taste, I taste and see. I'm under grace, the place to be. It means I'll never need an umbrella. I'm cool in the cold, in the hot weather. Whether or never I ever understand, I'm a man in the hands of great plans. I stand with faith and a life I never known to touch. And still, I saw my clutch, but I'm like, what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? Live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a live with the death. So, what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? And live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living.
Calvary Kids Online. Great job during worship, now it's Bible time. Calvary Kids Online. So turn on your mind and watch the next part. Hey, hey Stephanie, I think we really got to work on that lyric. Hello again, everyone. My name is Graham, and as you can see, I kind of like candy a little bit. <laughs> I think when you know what kind of candy someone likes, it says a lot about their individuality. Individuality is discovering who you're meant to be so you can make a difference. Because we're all different, right? We look different, we act different, we're gifted at different things. Like maybe your gift is that you're really smart. Or, maybe you're a gifted performer. Someday, you're going to be a star. Or, what if your gift is sports? Hmm. Of all these gifts here, which one do you think will make the greatest difference in the world? Clearly, it's the smarties, right? I mean, they get the best grades in school, they invent things, and solve complicated problems for people. They could literally change the world with their gift. Ooh, but hold on a second. These stars entertain us. They make us laugh and cry and feel all kinds of emotions. We learn things from the songs they sing and the stories they tell. Things a smarty would never be able to teach us. Surely the stars make the greatest differences. Ooh, then again, when I'm watching sports, it really gets my blood pumping. And playing sports helps us to grow stronger and stay healthy. Without our health, it'd be hard to enjoy anything. People with a gift for sports can really make a difference. Hmm, this is a tough one. I can't decide which gift will make the greater difference. Maybe there's another gift I'm not thinking of. And maybe, as we'll learn in today's story, these gifts work better together. I know what to do. I'll see you in a bit. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, Verses 12 through 27. The Apostle Paul traveled far and wide, spreading the good news about Jesus wherever he went. Several years after starting a church in Corinth, Paul got the word that, well, things there weren't going so great. I need to write them a letter. Quill, please. My brothers and sisters, I have been told you are arguing with one another. Paul especially wanted the new believers to understand that God had given each of them unique gifts, and no one's gift was more important than anybody else's. There are different kinds of gifts, but they are all given to believers by the same Spirit. There are different ways to serve, but they all come from the same Lord. There are different ways the Spirit works, but the same God is working in all these ways and in all people. Now, just like the believers in Corinth, each of you has also been given special gifts. God designed every human being uniquely for a special purpose. Each of you are good at different things. Certain skills and talents come more easily to you. Mm -hmm. But once you decide to follow Jesus, you have the power of God's spirit at work in you. So your gifts are supercharged. <laughs> now, you're not just trying to do it all on your own. God is at work in and through your gifts. Let's see what some of those gifts might look like. Ah, maybe your eyes are great at seeing patterns and finding amazing ways to organize things. Maybe you've got a stellar voice and you can encourage the people around you with your singing. Well, it's possible God's given you a gift for uh, Hmm, let's find out. Ooh, baking. You can bring joy to the people in your life with tasty cookies or bread, or uh, let's see, quarter cup, third cup, half a cup. 
Mm-hmm, fractions might be your thing. Maybe math comes really easily to you, and you can take time to help kids you know who struggle with numbers, like me. <laughs> oh, here's another. You might have some serious skills on the basketball court. That gives you an awesome chance to show courage and endurance in tough practices and kindness to everyone. Yes, even kids on the other team. Let's take a look at one more gift. What could it be? Oh. Earbuds. Did you know that listening can be an amazing gift? Yeah. So many people are stressed out and hurting, and what they need most is just a friend to let them talk and really hear them out. These are only a few of the unique individual gifts that God has given. Yours might be entirely different. But here's the awesome thing. The gifts that God has given, you can open and use anytime, and you can use them to help the people around you too. It's, it's like you both get a gift. Now you might be saying, huh, I wish I was really good at soccer instead of drawing, or just listening to someone is not as cool as singing a solo on stage but your gifts are just as important as the gifts God has given to everybody else. Listen to what Paul says. There is one body, but as many parts, it is the same with Christ. We are all baptized by one Holy Spirit, and so we are formed into one body. Then Paul sets up some pretty amazing word pictures. Take a look. Suppose the foot says, I am not a hand, so I don't belong to the body. By saying this, it cannot stop being part of the body. And suppose the ear says, I'm not an eye, so I don't belong to the body. By saying this, it cannot stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, how could it hear? If the whole body were an ear, how could it smell? God has placed each part in the body just as he wanted it to be. If all the parts were the same, how could there be a body? As it is, there are many parts, but there is only one body. The eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, it is just the opposite. The parts of the body that seem to be weaker are the ones we can't do without. God has put together all the parts of the body. In that way, the parts of the body will take care of one another. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part shares in its joy. You are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of it. God has given you a unique gift. No one else can play your part in the work God is doing in this world. And when you choose to follow God and let him work through your gift together with others, you can make a big difference in the world around you. You've probably figured this out already, but there are way more than three different kinds of gifts. You might be able to sew or create things on a computer. You could be good at balancing things on your head. And there are other things you might not think of as gifts. You might be a good listener or a good friend. You could be super patient or a peacemaker. And the truth is, all gifts, no matter how big or small they appear, can make a great difference in the world there's a way they can be even greater. When you believe that Jesus is who he says he is, then you're a part of something bigger than just yourself. The Apostle Paul wrote, you are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of it. That means it takes all of us working together with all of our many different gifts to truly point people the way to Jesus and to show people what Jesus is like. When we use our gifts together, we can make a greater difference than we can using our gifts alone. So, just imagine. If you use your gift, and then you find someone with a different gift to work with, and then both of you find someone else, you could all work together and you can accomplish things none of you could have imagined. You should definitely use the gifts you've been given to make a difference. But here's the one thing to remember. We can use our gifts together to make a greater difference. We can literally change the world. Mm. 
That is so good. Kind of lumpy though. Yeah, I'm gonna stop drinking that now. <laughs> I'll see you next time.